I came on like a wrecking ball. What are you doing? I, Go pee already, jeez. You never hit so hard in love. Okay, we're rolling, man. Sit down. And now it's time for That Gets My Goat! Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. That's right. Um, we're back with another amazing episode. It's going to be so rad. Have we been weekly on this thing this year? We've been pretty close to it, if not exactly. That's good, although we were pretty close to it last year. I think we were supposed to have released one like yesterday or today if we're going to be weekly, though, and we haven't. Cool. That's all right. So what are we going to talk about today, sir? Well, I thought we could talk a little bit about something that uh, we got the chance to participate in at the oh, New the Media orgy. Expo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the New Media Expo orgy. <laughs> that was really cool. I mean, when they said that the Rio had a bathhouse... I was like, oh, that must be something other than what I'm imagining. But no, it was, oh, exactly, it was exactly what you imagined. Yeah. It was just writhing, basically. It was just writhing bodies. Also, while we were there, there was this guy. He was an artist. He was working for a company called Cashfly, which I'm not exactly sure what they do. Although, if I remember right, me and Abby asked the person, I, I think while you were getting your caricature drawn or... Maybe it was Brian. I can't remember who it was. But anyways, we talked to their little rep that was at their thing. You went to their booth and they had a caricature artist that would draw your caricature on his iPad, actually. He just used his finger, didn't he? He didn't even use like a, a, a pen or anything. Or anything. He used his finger to draw this caricature of you just while you sat there. And then it, it was basically, I think, something to get you to come to their booth. And then they would try and get you to sign up for their service. I don't remember what their service was, but I think it was yeah, some it was kind, a of del- kind of thing. Yeah, like delivery of podcasts. You would get them even faster if you used their thing. Although, you know, it seems it seemed to me like you needed to have a bajillion downloads a week to make it worth your while. Right. And and yeah, they were talking about that they had hubs all over the world. Right. And so that if you know, if you have thousands of listeners in Germany, or right. whatever, you know, you they won't have to bounce all the way to back to America. Yeah, so Gino Moretto could get his uh, podcast much quicker in New Zealand then. Has, has he started a podcast too? Why first it was Marshall, now they all <laughs> No, no, I'm talking he could download it much quicker. Oh, in, sorry. From, Gino. In New Zealand from the hub of Cash Fund. Yeah. Uh yeah, so while we were there, Rish and I both got a caricature done of us. So who had done it first? Somebody did it before we did, and I was like, "Wow, that is awesome!" Brian's was first, I think. We saw Brian. We were walking like down the aisle. Brian was in the chair when we arrived. Yeah, and we looked over and we're like, "Oh my gosh!" We could tell that it was Brian before we could see that Brian was on the chair because they had a big screen up where you could watch the caricature being drawn like live, and so. Yeah, I see. The thing with Brian is I wasn't aware he was that good looking. I mean, I'm not nearly as gay as I would like to be, but I, his caricature was just like the handsomest guy in the world. And I was just like, wow, that's awesome. We've got to do that. I want to be handsome. <laughs> so how did it turn out for you, sir? Reet, 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 reet. <laughs> I am not an animal. <laughs> so you were telling me that you, you're like, Sat there and chatted with his dude like he was your best friend the entire time you were getting, uh, <laughs> you were getting your thing, your, your drawing done. You were saying like he, he told you a bunch of stuff that. Well, and you had yours done first, I believe. Okay. And I started asking him questions because to me, the yeah, art, I guess it, it's art. The art of doing a caricature is, is really interesting because I, you know, I used to draw and, uh, I've drawn people, and, uh-huh. and it's hard to capture their essence or capture the, you know, the likeness well enough that somebody's like, oh, that's so and so. Obviously, in many, many, many strokes in an hour long drawing, but what he was doing was like a six minute drawing or or less, and in color, and he rosied up your cheeks and stuff. And so I was just like, well, how does this guy do it in minimal? strokes you know what i mean it's like he gets the shape of the face and all that and so i was asking about his his style and his art and whether he did caricatures in uh, the park for people you know it's like uh-huh. couples come by and he does one and he was telling me that he used to work for magazines and he he was the in-house 
celebrity caricature artist for like this website that no longer exists, but used to be like a big gossip web website before TMZ came along. Uh-huh. And, I think what who was it that was the example uh, caricature that was in the flyer or whatever? Yeah, he he had a picture of Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings at his. Oh no, <laughs> it was Steve Buscemi. Ah, uh, that's right. Steve Buscemi was his and yeah, example. He, he was so grotesque and so like hunched over and, and just vile looking, and his caricature probably was too that i i had to ask him about it and i was like okay well how did you decide what to exaggerate on this steve buscemi one do you just look at somebody and say okay that guy has a big nose i'm gonna do the nose or oh that guy has buck teeth that's what i'm gonna do and he's like no no i I don't exaggerate i draw what i see in front of me and i'm like well yeah yeah but like on steve buscemi here he's got bags under his eyes big enough that they could hold gold coins did you see Buscemi and say, okay, his eyes are his most prominent feature. That's what I'm going to exa-. And he says, no, that's what he looks like. I didn't exaggerate. And I, and I was, it bothered me because he was lying. <laughs> like I said, he looked like Fudge and Gollum for the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and, and Buscemi's an ugly dude, but he's not Gollum. Okay. And so I would say, but well, you, but if you look at like what Al Hirschfeld did, and that, and he's like, well, I don't do that. And I was like, yes, but okay, but he would, in the fewest strokes possible, would try to to narrow somebody down to their essence. And he's like, well, I, yeah, I, I I don't do that. I, I what I do is more of a portrait. It frustrated me that he kept denying this <laughs> because, well, let's not bury the lead. Where we're going with this is, if you look at the caricature that he did of me and the one that he did of you. We belong in the Moss Eisley Cantina if we actually look <laughs> like that. And, you know, the, your droids, we don't serve their kind. They'll have to leave. I I hope that I do not look like that. I mean, chances are I probably do. <laughs> he doesn't but I know sir. you. You do not look like... He drew this sinister, <laughs> you know, the kind of guy who says, I like to watch... Uh, you know, that, that, that this a nefarious, twisted rapist of men and women alike, you know, an equal opportunity molester. Just, yeah, this, the, the kind of guy who would have to go door to door and announce who he is when he moves into a neighborhood. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, from like the laundry list of women you have had your way with, I know you don't look like that. But I definitely do have a creepy look on my face. It, it not such cre- it's like a sneaky, underhanded kind of a look. Like I'm plotting something. It's super villain. Okay. Uh, kind of a an expression, you know. I've got some kind of something's going on. I don't know. It's weird. I, I wonder because my eyes are really slitted, and I wonder if maybe it's just because I'm so fat nowadays that my face is. You know, my cheeks are pushing on my eyelids or something. Is that what he sees? I don't know. It's funny because you look at it and it's like, what is the deal with the devious Well, look? did it hurt, hurt your feelings at all when you saw that? Because, okay, I, 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 I've talked a lot, as you know. But but rebut what I just said. Brian Lincoln's looked like a Ken doll. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, his did look really good. And then yours, would you like to look like your caricature? Not especially. And then mine, I have like, do you remember Vincent Price on the Batman show? He played a character named Egghead. Dude, my toupee is way better than the toupee he drew in the the caricature. <laughs> I don't know. It's just it, uh, really repugnant stuff. And and the whole idea behind sitting here and asking him to do the caricature and listening to Cashfly's spiel was that hey, we'd be able to put those caricatures, professional caricatures. On our website. Right. You know, it's just like, cool. It, and, and this was before Scott Sigler even said that your product is not the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine, which is a terrible title. The product is you guys. It was like the day before Scott said that to us, if he ever actually said anything to us. <laughs> and so I just, I wondered, I, um, what is it you're clicking on, man? Uh, something for later. Heard. Is it bothering you? Should I stop? No, no. I just I thought maybe you still had the dictionary definition of caricature on there. Dictionary definition said, of the word spastic. Because it said 
exaggerated or, or something. It said ludicrous, ludicrous. What did it say, sir? <laughs> Ludicrously exaggerated. So the the mere definition of a caricature, although I, maybe he said that I don't do caricatures, I do portraits. I don't know. I, I I didn't like that, and I did. But maybe that was required for everybody except us to be disingenuous at. Oh, is that the word that I always get wrong? It doesn't mean what I think it means. No, I think it means what you think it means. The, the, because, you know, like the guy that I, I talked to after his panel, when it's just him and me, and I said, oh, you don't have to give me any of your horse shit now, sir. What do you think of this? And he's like, well, I teach a class on that. Or, oh, hey, you could pick up my book. And I was like, no, no, I'm asking you a question so I don't have to hear that selling artifice. You know what I mean? It's like, just as a person, answer this question for me, please. And I don't know if we talked about it, but somebody asked Brian Lincoln a question during his panel. And he spent like seven minutes answering it and then said, after the panel, come up and I'll, t- I'll show you how it's done or uh-huh. whatever. He didn't say, buy my book on it, attend my classes, you know, sign up for this kind of thing. Pay me money and I will tell you. And hopefully for that guy in the audience, it was like, wow, a breath of fresh air. A guy who wasn't a total jag off at the New Media Expo. That's <laughs> rad. I'm hoping they invite us back again. And evil will always triumph because good is dumb. Anyhow, so, so I just I was disappointed that the guy refused to answer that because I, I, I honestly wanted to know how if you were to do this professionally, where do you start? Do you start with the shape of the head? Do you start with, you know, it's like, an, because in every other caricature that I've seen, it's always kind of an amusing representation of somebody, but they've got enough details, right, that you recognize who that is. Uh huh. Yeah, it's interesting to have these caricatures up on our website, because if you remember way back when, we used to have little caricatures on there of each of us. Um, do you remember those little, they were, there was little ones. I have two or three still from when we first started the podcast, but, but for years you had the same damned one on there. Yeah. Unfortunately, and... I can't remember what, I, I think it was one of those. Cause one time I went through, I, there was this site and I've got it up right now. Actually, it's abbystation.com. It's a B I with a dash and then station.com. And you can get on there and you can go through it's basically, I think, supposed to be for making like little avatars for games or for your for games yeah. or for message boards or for Twitter or for whatever one of those kind of things. And uh, so I got on there, and you could pick from a bunch of different head shapes, and you can pick from eye things. And I went through and I made up one of you and one of me, and then I went through all the different things that you could adjust. Like I'd change our mouth so that we were sticking our tongue out or we were big smile or small smile or, you know, and I'd put sunglasses on us or a hat on us or just all sorts of different things. And I saved, I had like 40 of them. And then I would change it up like every week or two weeks. And then one day somehow I accidentally lost all these ones that I had saved. (laughs) And that's why it stayed on the same one for like two years or whatever because I didn't have one to change it up to anymore and I couldn't remember all the different little adjustments that I had made to go back and remake them all I could do is like stick the final one up there next to it and try and figure it out you know Uh going through and trying each does that look like the same thing Eh, no that one no that so it was too much of a pain to redo it so I never did I vaguely remember somebody did a caricature of us you were Thor and I was Loki. Whatever became of that one? Oh, that would have been cool to bring out every time that there's another movie with those. Yeah, movies. that one is still around. I actually have it. I think it's saved on our website. But yeah, somebody took the heads that I had done of the caricatures oh, okay, from that place and stuck them onto Thor and Loki ah. for us. I like. I thought it was fun. It was cool that you could make your own little thing and, and have it and you could adjust it up. You could put a beard on it. You could put... I remember we one of us had a microphone and one of us yeah. had a headset one time. Yeah, a microphone and there was like, I don't know, you could be holding a hockey stick or I can't remember what all the options were, but there was tons of them, a soda bottle or, or whatever. You held a valentine in yours and I held the middle finger in mine. Uh, but, but there were there were many options. Yes, there were many options and it was cool. I went through and did it and had it uh, 
that way. But at a certain point, it got old because it was the same one forever. And so we finally took it down when Sunny C provided us with a different little header that we could put up, which was our logo with the microphone beside it. And we left that one up for a long time until just recently when I finally swapped it out with these new caricatures that we have. So it was cool to to get back to that and bring those up. Yeah, I was just messing around with it while we've been talking here. And uh, I don't know what I looked like before, but I don't know that I've got it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're trying to create it again. I was trying to see if I could bring back my version of me. I still have the old one, so maybe I could actually do it again, but... Uh, yeah. Is, is it definitely the same website? It's the same website, yeah. Because it's all these years later. It has to be a hundred times better now, right? I don't know if there's a huge difference, uh, I don't but know. Uh, I, I think it would be cool to get it and go th- figure them all out again. But I don't know that I'll take the time for it. It might be better to spend my time on other things, yeah, <laughs> like riding for an hour a day. Because if I did that five days a week, taking weekends and holidays off, I would have... 50 stories in a year. It wasn't even an hour. It was 15 minutes a day. Boy, that's depressing. It's not depressing, though. It's inspiring. It's that easy. All you have to do is put a small amount of effort into it. The thing is, I probably have 25 stories I've written in the last six, seven years in notebooks that are just sitting in the friggin' notebooks. And it's so much more work to type them up than it is to write another story in a notebook. (laughs) <laughs> the, none of these will ever see the light of day. Oh. You just need to uh, get a fan's address and mail them the story. Who was that? Was that Clay that said he was going to do that for me? I don't know. Did somebody say they would do that for you? Yeah. They said, I know somebody said that they would type up audio files that I had made. Yeah. What became of that person? Because I wanted to send them my... Our... That person still lives. Okay. We're gonna I that, haven't yeah. haven't taken advantage of uh, that offer yet, but uh, I should. Okay. So yeah, the, to to finish the story about the caricature artist or whatever. Oh, he wore a beret too. Yeah, he had like a little backpack too, with like art supplies or whatever. We saw him walking out of the of the show one day. One of the days after we'd gotten in, we're like, wow, look at that guy. You, you, you expect to see him like holding one of those little pallets. Yeah. <laughs> and like doing this thing with the thumb. Yeah. yeah they, and they, they're showing his... cartoons, but the people don't really do anymore. Right. right. And having his tongue like out. Mr. <laughs> 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 But yeah, I was, I, I was trying to get Abby Hilton into be, uh, into the line to get a caricature. And so we went like the next day and she stood in the line and he didn't even say anything to her. He was doing uh, a caricature. I think it was a, of Dave Thompson of Podcastle. And oh, by the way, the Dave Thompson one, he was naked in a half shell in the Venus de Milo position. I, I, was it Venus? De, who was it? Yes, it was Venus. I could not believe that. But he, but he only draws what he sees. And uh, anyway, Abby su- stood in this line. And then once the person, you know, was done, he said, oh, I'm sorry. He was the last one. But she had stood in the line and he couldn't have said this to her while she was in the line. He had to wait until it was her turn. So ultimately, I didn't like that he wouldn't answer my questions or that he was delusional. And I didn't like that he didn't draw Abby. That was kind of a annoying thing that he would Oh, and her. I didn't like that you and I look like, step right up, folks, behind this curtain. Uh, <laughs> God's mistakes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you, you, caricatures are supposed to be goofy and weird looking. But... Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean that was our experience with caricatures. I've never. Have you ever done one of those? Like you go to the amusement park or or some place like that where they actually have somebody that's just there doing caricatures of people. I've seen them. I've never had it done of me. Why would I want a picture of me? But I have done drawings of other people. I while we were on the panel, I did a drawing of Dave Thompson uh, <laughs> podcasting Venus for us. Oh show. yes. <laughs> It was a, yeah, he was in a Linda Lovelace position. No, it was Dave Thompson, Podcastle Enforcer, and he had like a, a baseball bat or something and a really evil look on his face. And he liked it. And I thought, oh, that's cool. But, but yeah, all of us who got the caricatures, including Abby, who didn't, we're going to put them on our 
websites or on our blogs or something like that. And I wonder if other people did, if Marshall put one on his or Johnny Feisty put one on, who is Johnny Feisty? And, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen them, but I haven't gone and searched for them either. But yeah, it's fun. I don't know. That's something that I think is cool. I would go back to that website's booth again and again each year to get a new one just to see how they would turn out and maybe throw them up on the site. It's funny because for ours, we actually made sure we were facing opposite directions so that we could stick them on either end yeah, of our true. thing. Because most people, he just had the chair set up and it was facing one way and they were all facing that way. And I suppose that wasn't necessary. We could have just swapped it flopped it <laughs> in the it, in the photoshop program or whatever and that would have done the same thing it did, yeah it didn't occur to me oh but what i wanted was the two of us together like you know we're lovers at an amusement park um, yeah. so that we could put it on our blog or sorry on our main page as the two of us because you know we're the two-headed monster or whatever but he would not do that you know because He's, he values his art too highly. Hey, he wore a beret. <laughs> he did. He obviously values his art very highly. People don't wear berets unless they're being ironic or they value their <laughs> art very highly. But, you know, I like caricatures. I think they're fun. Oh, but wait. You have had one done of you? I don't no, know. no, I never have. That's why I was asking if you had. I've seen, you know, my like sisters had one done. Or, you know... But if you go to the beach or you go to an amusement park or you go to jail, they tend to do one of those. And I, I, they're, I they're called it's... mug shots, actually, at jail. That's not a caricature. That's okay. if you, if you, a straight-up picture. If you, if, it seems like a if caricature you go to court, because... they do that. It seems like a caricature because, you know, you, most of those people are, like, stoned at the time that the picture's taken. So they look a little weird. But it's actually a photo. <laughs> but, yes, in court, they do sometimes do the drawings. Usually not for the low-profile cases, though. I uh, think it would be cool. I, you know, the, uh, Melissa Hills or some uh, wrote us a song one yes, time. Yes, yes, it was Melissa Hills and, who did that. You know, I, how come we never asked somebody to do a theme tune? You know, just like an instrumental song that could play at the beginning of every one of our episodes. We should have done that long ago. Because when you hear these songs that other people do, I mean, like Norm Sherman wrote his own song but like the journey into theme is so good and then there's that awful hungry lucy song that plays that it's not awful but her name is awful and it the song is awful that plays on the full cast <laughs> podcast you know it's just everybody has theirs but we never end our podcast with theme tune provided by you know and theme and tune provided by garage band and th that's something that we should have asked for long long ago and anyway i was getting to but we could ask people, they could do little drawings of us, too. Did you ever see the art that uh, the guy that, that did the art for um, Space Luke Hookers? Luke Wilson? Oh, sorry. Jonathan Wilson. <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, so, yeah. If you ever see the artwork that he did for Squidges, the very first episode that you and I did, I believe. That was him that did For that? Drabblecast. That's a caricature. I don't know if it's a caricature. It's, it's me. With like a hat on and a look, I guess the look that I have on my face all the time. <laughs> <laughs> my resting expression. <laughs> and, but I think it's neat that there's a picture of me out there like that. And yeah, if people wanted to do caricatures of us, I, we'd be happy to put them on. I mean, it couldn't be any worse than what Beret Guy did that's on there right now. Yeah, that's probably true. Squidges. Squidges was a story that we participated in for Drabblecast way back when, 2008. I think it was our first thing we ever did for Drabblecast. Always a fond memory, that story, for some reason. It was a fun story, too. It was really goofy. We goofed it up, tried to make it as goofy as possible. And, uh, yeah, uh, another caricature of Rish Outfield out there that he just stole off of Facebook, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, apparently he took a photograph of me while I was sleeping. <laughs> but that, uh, I, I forgot don't... to ask for one, so he just came over to your house, mm -hmm. snuck in your window, and took a picture. So we've talked a long time about this, and maybe we shouldn't have. <laughs> we'll try harder next week. No, we won't. Come on. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you later. Be well. 
donate to the show. That gets my go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you. And there's the Thor ones. <laughs> the Thor ones still exist. I could put them. I don't know how to grab those. I mean, they're there. Maybe I have them in my folder. You don't. You said you lost it all. No, but I like the 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 one that remains. I might have in the Doomsday folder. What if I find the one. That song is awesome, by the way. Way better than Let It Go. The I've got a crazy idea. Will you marry me? It's a great it, yes. Way better than Let It Go. Can I say something crazy? That's what it is. Oh, I love crazy. That guy has an interesting voice. Do you know who the voice is of that guy? I don't. It it's says a, the name, and I didn't right. recognize it. He's got a very interesting voice. We finish each other's sandwiches. That's what, what I was, was going to say. say. Jinx. Jinx again. Holy cow, that is great. So much better than Let It Go.